Okay, great. So, good evening, uh, everybody, to this third uh, uh, career talk session of this week uh, dedicated to the luxury management world. I really want to thank uh, Andrew Lee for being with us tonight. Uh, and uh, well, I let uh, I let you, uh, Anjuli, to present yourself uh, first of all. Hello, everybody. So my name is Anjuli. I'm almost 30 years old, and I'm currently sales manager in charge of the groups and events for the pre-opening of the hotel Anantara, a Thai brand in Nice, in French Riviera. So um, to introduce myself. I would say that I started to discover the luxury hospitality when I was doing my business school in Lyon first. So I had the opportunity to work as an intern for an agency in Miami. And I was in charge of the events. And I knew that I wanted to work within the event and the communication department. So I had the first specialization in fourth year of business school, and I did my intern in a big French event agency, which is GL Events in Lyon. And I was in contact with a salesperson in hotels because I had to organize Congress and um, incentives. So they proposed me to work for them after my graduation, but I wanted to, to do more. And I found a specialization in luxury hospitality and event management at IUM. It was perfect for me because I'm a girl from the sun. I'm a girl from a French island, which is called Réunion Island. And uh, I was in Lyon, in the center of France, and I wanted to, to be in a place where I can see the sea. But obviously, it's not the only reason. Monaco is well known worldwide for the luxury management, for the luxury hotels. And the program proposed was very good, among the best one in France. Because Monaco is independent, but it's, uh, it's uh, close to, to France and Italy. So and they speak French, so sometimes we think that it's French, but it's not. And um, the, the most attractive for me to go in Monaco was the diversity of nationalities. Uh, I had more than 10 different nationalities in my class, and it was a small class. So I had the January intake at the university, and I had only six months of uh, classes, but it was very interesting. The most interesting for me was to work with um, professional, very professional. They are not only teacher, they work in company before. I'm thinking about Bertrand Petit or uh, Biff, uh, Janet Lunde for those who are at the university. And it was very, very interesting. And um, the, the advantage to be in Monaco is that it's very small and you have more than seven luxury hotels from five, uh, four to five stars. And I just sent my resume and I got an interview right away for an internship, for my final internship. So the first one was in sales and event management at the Hotel Metropole Monte Carlo, which is an independent five star with a gastronomic restaurant at uh, Joël Robuchon. And I discover uh, the job and I loved it. I loved it. So it was only six months. And when I was working as an intern, I've been contacted on LinkedIn by the resource, uh, human resources manager from Le Meridien Monaco. And he was looking for someone to join uh, his team as a salesperson. So the main difference between the sales and event uh, person and just the sales one that in sales you do only proposal for the clients and contract and the events management you do also all the coordination with the events so I had on, then nine months at the Meridian in Monaco which is an amazing place because you have the only private beach in Monaco so I really discover all the um, celebration part 
So the weddings, the bar mitzvah, and all the um, private events. I also worked for very nice brands such as Chanel, who had a convention there. Uh, it was a, a huge seminar with more than 200 persons over four days. So it was very interesting. But in Monaco, it's a short contract only. So you have the opportunity to stay or to leave. And uh, I loved this experience at Le Meridien Monaco, but I had the opportunity to have um, a fixed contract in France at Le Negresco as a sales and event person. Um, Le Negresco is a five star. It's well known in the world. And it was my first real um, fixed jobs. So uh, I stayed four years at Le Negresco. I was in charge of receiving the request from the client, doing the proposal, doing all the negotiation with the clients, uh, do the site inspection, uh, then do the contract, and then also organize the event. So it was also seminars, but a lot of weddings, a lot of bar mitzvah. So it's very interesting. I would say that a private event is more stressful than uh, business events. And uh, so I said three years at this position and I wanted to see something else. So my director proposed me to be a sales manager. What is different, the sales manager is going abroad to look for the clients. So my job was to go abroad to look for agencies, um, uh, private concierge, uh, and to participate to trade show and fairs. So I was in competition with all the hotels in the world. And the goal was to bring a lot of business in Nice, or at least at the destination. Um, so I had this position for one year. I've been to Germany, to UK, uh, to, to different countries in Europe, in Spain. And I plan to go in Russia because I was in charge of the Russian market and then in the US. But <laughs> you know what happened? Yeah. It was in 2020, so all the business trip were stopped, and um, I had to uh, change my position. So I was still um, sales manager, but more in charge of the French market, and we tried to keep the clients, but everybody was afraid. So it was a very tough. Uh, moment for the business industry and for the travel industry, the hospitality in general. And then um, they decided to, to cut off the contract of the, man the sales manager. But that was okay. Uh, I took some time for me and then I had the opportunity to, to join the Anantara in Nice, the pre-opening. So the Anantara is a five-star hotel. Uh, it was supposed to open next year, uh, the past year, sorry. And we had troubles with the construction. So during this time, I decided to work in Monaco again. <laughs> it was a pleasure to going back to Monaco. And I worked this time for La Société de Van Mer, which is just the biggest employer in, um, in Monaco with um, most of the hotel and restaurant. And I was in charge of the coordination of the events. So I liked it, but I'm a sales person. And I wanted to go back to the sales side. side. And uh, even though the Anantara uh, is still not open, we plan to open at the end of the year, um, the group NH, which owns Anantara, proposed me to, to, to start my contract and to have like um, a double job. So I'm starting to work for Anantara, but since it's not open yet, I'm also working for the hotel NH Nice, which is a four star, and I'm doing all the groups and events part. So on, on a daily basis, I'm doing the same that I've done uh, in my career. So receiving the request from the client, uh, doing the contract and negotiate the best rate uh, for them. 
So it's a lot of negotiation and uh, discussion with the client, but it's also discussion internally. Um, because sometimes I want to, to win this business. I want to have the client at the hotel, but they don't have enough budget or they want to do something crazy. And I have to go and negotiate with my own colleagues, with the chef, <laughs> very often with the chef and uh, with the revenue manager to propose the best rates. And uh, I think that it's the most difficult for me on a daily basis to negotiate internally. That's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind so, of weird. It's, uh, it's, it's a big presentation, but I think it answers a lot of questions. Um, I'm just checking the, the question that we had before. Um, I spoke about Monaco and uh, why I chose Monaco. Um, what I was expecting when I joined IUM was a name on my resume, was um, um, a network. So we have a big network. And when you say, okay, I've done my master in IUM, people are like, oh, great. <laughs> That's great. And uh, you are known in Monaco and you know Monaco. And that's big because even if it's a little country, it's uh, scary. And the, the chance when you are in Monaco that you have so many opportunities to attend events such as the Grand Prix of Formula One, um, uh, the tennis, uh, the, the Rolex Master Tennis, uh, the yacht show. And these are huge events and everybody in the world wants want to attend to these events. And you, you can participate. You can be a hostess or you can visit it with uh, IUM sometimes. Um, the, the school knows so many people that if you want to do something, if you want to go somewhere, and if you are an art worker, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree uh, with you. And uh, well, since you already uh, said as a lot of interesting things, uh, I, I had a question in mind, uh, and uh, which is uh, the favorite part of your job? Uh, your, your favorite, uh, I mean, yeah, favorite part of your job uh, that you like the most? So for the events part, I would say when the event is a success when the event is a success and when you have been working for almost one year with a client uh, to organize a gala dinner and you show the flowers and you show the menu and everything goes well and you're like, wow. And uh, obviously to receive the thank you from the clients and to share with the team, um, it's amazing. Uh, I would say that is my favorite part. And um, when I was uh, going abroad, uh, it's the wow effect when you present your hotel. Okay, I'm coming from Monaco, I'm coming from Nice, and this is my hotel, and you should come and join us. And they are very amazed. Yeah, I can believe. And uh, in terms of uh, success that you collected, uh, which is like the the, the one that you have in your heart, like uh, my your best practice, uh, the, the ones you are more proud of? Oh, uh, I, it's very easy. Um, I was working at Le Negresco and one day I'm receiving a call from the embassy of China in Marseille and they want to uh, buy out the hotel like two weeks later. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not possible, I'm sorry. We we have clients and I can offer you some rooms, but I cannot uh, buy out the hotel for you in two weeks. No, it was in three weeks. And they are like, no, no, but it's someone very important. We need it. Yes, but it's not possible. So I'm asking to my direction and they are like, okay, why does the embassy of China want to, to buy out the hotel? I'm like, I don't know, someone important is coming, but they don't want to tell. So it go, it's going like this and they are coming and visit and they insist. I said, okay, so we can have one entire floor, or two floors, but it's the most we can do. One week later, we received a call from the French state and they told us, okay, so you need to, to put away all your clients. We need your hotel. <gasps> no, we way. Like, no, that's not possible. It was like in March. It's not possible. We cannot. 
and they insist. So I was not in the um, uh, in the confidence, but I knew that someone important was coming. So we had to contact all our clients saying, okay, you have to find something else. And then um, we heard that the Promenade des Anglais was going to be closed. And then that the French president was coming in Nice at this date. So we understood that it was someone very important <laughs> from China. Uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently. And it was too crazy week because we received the security uh, and they, they checked everything absolutely everything the air conditioning and the, everything everything was checked no way. and um and yes it was the the, the president of uh, of china who came and i had the opportunity to to be the first contact and the, the first person that they had and uh, to to work for this special event which is the venue of the um, of the president of China at in Nice to discuss a very important matter with the French president. And everybody in France knew that the, the president was at the Negresco. We were everywhere on the media. The city was almost closed for this event. Uh, and I was there. So it is That's amazing. <laughs> it was very stressful, but I did it. I imagine uh, just a little bit of stress for you but uh, what a wonderful I mean a success uh, and satisfaction also to manage all this stuff I mean and um, no that's great and which is uh, on the other side the uh, toughest challenge that you faced so something that was really tough uh, situation that was kind of difficult uh... it's easy also it's a, i spoke about the the weddings it's amazing to to work for a wedding it's the biggest day in the life in a person so you can have uh, an error you can have something that is going wrong on a business meeting it's okay if the av is not working is the food is not good if you have bad weather, it's okay. It's only one day in their life and they are doing the same seminar the, ne the next year. But for a wedding, it's not the same. And I had some cases like this, or we had trouble with the, with the food or with some guests. And um, I remember one day, it was at Le Meridien, we had a cocktail wedding around the, the swimming pool outside and um, the oh, I don't know the name in English. The the water to for the garden, mm -hmm. the automatic yeah. water yeah. for the garden went on, and it was ah. not planned. Oh. And all the guests were wet, no. and also the band. So the, the 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 band was completely wet. So the material to do the music was not working anymore. No, and it was <laughs> it was terrible. <gasps> and yeah. you know I was a salesperson so you are doing this but I sold the event I planned yeah. everything with everybody but I'm not responsible for the water in the garden it's the Absolutely. manager of the garden but the, I was the first contact at the hotel for this person so the day after when they complain they complain with me not with sure. the manager of the garden so Yes, I would say that the toughest challenge uh, is uh, is this management of um, of the event. Actually, yeah, like, and I think well. that you you have to manage many people, many different teams at the same time. No, exactly. You have to coordinate everything with the kitchen, everything with the rooms when you have groups, with everything with everybody, and you need to to uh, be extremely organized. And you cannot miss anything. I mean, for, for a private event like this, you cannot miss anything because it's yeah. your responsibility. If the event goes badly, it's your, your responsibility. Yeah, and I also think that a further element is the things that it's a luxury uh, situation, a luxury level. So the attention to the details is something fundamental. And, customers i mean they pretend uh, the perfection uh, or something close to the perfection 
exactly and that's totally normal they, they pay a lot they are in a luxury environment so uh, we need to be perfect yeah no i can i can believe it and uh well i invite people who are participating to have i mean to make questions if they have them in the meanwhile i have many because it's very interesting what you're i mean uh, telling us so uh for what concern uh, customers uh, how can you in some way uh, plan uh, their expectations uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? Uh, how can you plan the expectation of the clients? I mean, uh, how can uh, prevent them in some way? You need to anticipate their needs. It's, it's luxury. It's luxury. They should not ask, actually. You should propose. Um, when, when they had a very long trip and they arrived at the hotel, uh, they are tired and you need to anticipate and uh, give them a seat, give them water or propose a private check-in and they, they can be seated or you need to anticipate everything. For groups, uh, I usually ask all the information in advance and uh, with the experience you know, for example, for a wedding, I know what I have to ask just something silly, but at the beginning, when a client gives you a menu, a menu, he just gives you his menu. He does not give all the allergies and intolerance that they, the guest might have. But as an event manager, I have to think, okay, we are going to have 300 person. And if I have a vegan, so now we have a lot of vegans so we are used to, but seven years ago, it was not the case. It was not the case. So you have to ask, okay, so if you have one guest allergic to fish and one is not eating uh, lactose and you need to anticipate because it's not their job. So they just want to get married and they just want to enjoy and they don't think about it. Sure. So it's this type of details. I have a lot of examples with this type of details. Um, sometimes the florist, they want to set up the day before because it's more convenient for them. But um, you need to think about the flower and it's very hot and you need to think about everything. <laughs> sure. So in some way you have to think before the others uh, about all the potential issues and stuff like that. Uh, okay. Exactly. And the Psychology. First, exactly. The first day at HIUM, um, Andrea, the, the professor of event management, he told us, you have to remember one thing about event management. It's, it's going to rain 365 days a year. And we're like, well, oh, French Riviera, it's never rain. It's going to rain and you need to have a backup. And this is the gold rule in event management. You need to have a backup <laughs> when you have an Always, event. Right. Always, Always a plan B ready okay now that's very I mean, very interesting and uh, we have a uh, few questions uh, okay the, the first one is uh, how was the studying at IUM what did you like about your course and why should I choose to go to IUM for my master rather than another European university um, the answer is uh, luxury I mean Monaco is the place. If you want to study a luxury, you have to go in Monaco. Uh, if you want to study anything else, you can maybe choose another university in Europe. But when you say Monaco in the mind of people, they think about a Place du Casino, the Hotel de Paris, and all these luxury items. And when you are in Monaco, you are within luxury items every day. You walk and you you, you are just in front of the gastronomic restaurant and a luxury shop. And every day you have people from this world. So maybe you are not part of this world. I was not. But you are familiar with, um, with this world. I was not familiar with the fashion, um, luxury fashion and, for example, the bags. I didn't know. But when you are in Monaco, you have to know this type of thing. Because when you have a client coming, and he wants to negotiate with you, but he has a gray scaly bag. 
you know that is a client that has a lot of money. So, okay, you're not going to, to discuss about uh, uh, small euros. Uh, and I had colleagues in Nice, for example, they didn't study luxury and they didn't notice this type of detail. The watch that the client had, the, 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 the bag that they had, and I learned all these things in Monaco. Uh, the other part was the international aspect, because as I told before, um, we had so many different nationalities. And today I have friends everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world. And they are working in luxury hospitality everywhere in the world. So, um, for example, when I applied to Anantara, I went on LinkedIn. And I had uh, a friend from IUM who worked in Thailand for Anantara, for one of the hotels. So I had the opportunity to chat with her and ask her about the value of the company and everything, which are very important for me. And um, yes, it's so you are mixed in the world between French language, English language, which is the, the, the language speak at IUM, and Italian. Um, mostly, and everybody speaks <laughs> three languages. It's kind of the same sometimes. time. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you start in French and then you are in English and you finish in Italian. So it's very interesting to 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 be uh, like this. And yes, and why did you like about your courses? So as I told before, um, the professor they are professional. They worked in luxury hospitality. It's not like a you take a book and you read the book. Uh, they do have experience. So when you add Bertrand um, talking about the cruise industry and the management, it was real situation. He lived this situation. It's not like um, a case that you study in the book. So that's what I like the most uh, at Taiwan. That's great, um, yeah. That's the, the point of distinction, I would say, of the school, for sure. Then we have a very practical question, which is uh, if there's any internship uh, that you know about uh, where you are working right now. You always have internships in Monaco. <laughs> I mean, uh, especially now that uh, the industry is suffering. Uh, we are very suffering. We are missing uh, people. It depends on the service you would like to work that in luxury hospitality it's a big challenge we don't have receptionists anymore we don't have people at the restaurant and it's very very difficult so yes uh, there is a lot of internships and if you're in monaco you can just contact uh, the societe de bande mer the sbn they are as i told before the biggest employer in monaco and they are internships in hotels, but also at the direction des ventes, the headquarters um, in Monaco. And for my, for, for me, for example, I didn't have any annons for, for the internship. I just sent my resume. And they, usually they take an intern by service and they take an intern for six months. So, um, so if you send your resume at the good moment, you, you can have the internship. That's, uh, yeah, that's true, absolutely. So um, the, another question is, uh, uh, I, uh, do I need to know French in order to be able to find an internship or a job in Monaco? So mm -hmm. concerning the hospitality and event management. In Monaco, no, uh, it's not mandatory. It's a plus. It's a plus because you have a lot of um, a lot of French clients actually, but French clients speak English, so that's okay. But it's a plus yeah. because, uh, for example, at the SBM Monaco, uh, the everybody speaks French at the office. Yeah, sure. So it's more internal, maybe. Yes, it's internal. With the clients, you speak English, but. Internally, you speak French most of the time, but obviously, if you don't speak in French, that's not a problem. I, I think, uh, uh, but a second language is the best for sure. Yeah. Italian, Spanish, or Russian, or anything, but uh, 
it's a yes, because of hospitality. I mean, uh, the, the the more languages you know, the best it is probably. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, I uh, actually was very curious uh, about uh, um, uh, a point of uh, differentiation in your opinion that uh, a note uh, an agency of events can have uh, a point of distinction uh, comparing to the other in order to succeed in terms of uh, not person, but as a company, as an hotel, mm. a point of distinction? I would say organization. It's, it's silly to say that, but when you work in this industry, you need to be organized. I think it's the biggest, uh, is the biggest challenge. Uh, it's to be a person organized because you're facing so many things and you have to think about so many things. So, for example, today uh, I'm selling the hotel for this summer, but I also had all the invoice from my past event, but I'm also working on my next group groups coming. And when you have someone very efficient in front of you, so for example, an agency, when you have someone who wants you quickly, read the image correctly, who synthesize, it's so much easier to work with this type of person. And uh, uh, sometimes I prefer to work with an agency than uh, uh, just a company, because in the company, for example, they sell swimming pools and they organize a seminar, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know what is a rooming list, but they don't think about all the things that we have to think about when you work in this industry. Um, so yes, I would say, organization and efficiency and uh, it's hospitality so empathy empathy yeah. and we faced two terrible years so i was saying also to my manager um we have cancellation and payment condition it's normal like everybody we have contract sure and they sign this contract but have you seen what we've been through the the past two years, so maybe a company has some difficulties to pay or they want to be more flexible or they want to cancel and postpone the event. And um, I think empathy helps you because even though you, you lose some money at the moment because you say, okay, so you can cancel and you don't pay anything, it's bad for you, it's bad for your company. But two years later, they will come back and say, okay, you have been good to me. And now I have money and now I want to organize my gala dinner with you. And you have been the only hotel who, who authorized to cancel without penalty. So thank you. Sure, sure. I completely understand. Well, so we have another question in my master application. When do I choose which of these three specializations I will follow in my degree? Do I have to choose from the beginning of my application? So, um, absolutely not. I can answer this question. You can choose uh, one of the three specializations that we have once applying or also at the end of the first term. Because the first term is common among the three um, specializations and it is only during the second term. So from January that uh, you go in deep dive in each specialization. So do not worry. You can think about it uh, during the first term. Uh, as um, well, as Anjuli said, uh, you can speak with the professors who are, first of all, managers also. You can speak with the program director to have suggestion you can also understand while being here already studying uh, this uh, luxury environment which is uh, the things that you think could fit the most with you so these are the tips uh, that I would uh, tell you uh, I don't know if Anjuli has uh, other ones to give in order to Decide. Yes, to answer the question, can you give us some tips on how to choose? Um, I think it comes from the art. 
And um, for example, fashion, it will be mainly in capitals. Um, for my part, I was uh, also editing and I didn't want to go to Paris, for example. And if you want to work for a fashion, a company or for a luxury brand, for example, you want to work for LVMH, L'Oréal, Hermès, anything, the headquarters are in Paris or in New York or anywhere in the world, but you have to be in the capital. And I wanted to be able to choose where I was going to live. I don't want to stay in France for my entire life. And working in the um, hospitality, it's to be able to work everywhere in the world. So yeah. that's why I chose hospitality because you have hotels everywhere. You have hotels in city, but you have hotels at the beach, at the mountain. You can do whatever you want. So uh, if it can, can help. And um, also the salaries are different. Are different. When, you, when you start in hospitality, you start at the bottom. So it's important to know you're not going to be manager just after your graduation. Uh, but but if you work well, you can uh, you can evaluate quickly. But um, you will start from the bottom, and it's important to know because yeah. the salary will be different when when you start, and seven years after, like me, or ten years after, it's different, and you will have to to have this goal. <laughs> okay, I'm starting low, but uh, I'm going high after. And in, um, in fashion, it's quite different because you are working for very big companies in big cities, so it's different. Yeah, that's true. And uh, this is uh, also the reason why passion is for sure one of the elements that you have to follow. So all the things we said, uh, but as usual, uh, if you have an interest, something by your heart, I mean, it's, uh, you, you have to follow it. Sure. So here we have another question. If I join the university in January, will I miss the first term courses or is a second intake and we start from the beginning? So I can answer this as well. No, if you start in January, you are going to skip the first semester. And for this reason, uh, uh, to be eligible for January, uh, um, we ask to have at least 240 European credits instead of 180 European credits that are requested for September. And also to be eligible for January, you need to already have a background in, uh, in terms of bachelor degree uh, concerning the business and the management subjects while for September you can have any kind of background really so we have uh, people from uh, the music field uh, um, whatever really art uh, philosophy um, I mean in September uh, the mix of backgrounds is extremely interesting so then obviously who join in January uh, get into the same class but um, for this reason why we decided to have different starting points that's that's why um so how are students selected to study in IUM and what is the selection process so I'm gonna go quickly through it uh well actually we um have a very fast uh, uh, selection and admission process you can go through the website uh, and uh, you will find apply online at the bottom you can click over there and you will see that uh, some documents are required so there's a specific list of documents uh, to upload then uh, we can uh, once uh, we receive all the documents uh, we schedule an interview which could be with the program director or are the professors of the course and this is mainly a motivational interview so not a technical one it's more to understand who you are your passions uh, why you would like to apply for this course why luxury field why IUM why Monaco so really to understand your motivation 
and uh, and then that's it. So it's a very fast, uh, a couple of weeks, uh, and uh, and it's done. Then I'm gonna type in the chat my email, so guys, you can uh, feel free to contact me anytime to go more in details for this um, process. So I would like to uh, one last question. Uh, I have, uh, so then we <laughs> we let uh, everyone go, but I'm curious. So since uh, your entire um, background and experience uh, is uh, in hospitality and events management, uh, what about the future? Would you like to keep uh, uh, in this uh, world? Would you like to change? Uh, how do you see it? I love hospitality industry. I love tourism. So I would say um, I would love to be a director of stage for uh, a luxury hotel. But I would like also to work like for a tourism um, agency. Uh, but uh, yes, I, I like to have the contact with the client. Um, but it's quite um, difficult to because it's a stressful job. It is. Yeah. It is, and um, when you have the top of the job, the most stressful, event manager is always the first one. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know about the future. Uh, for sure, I would love to manage a small hotel like 40 rooms uh, in the future. Um, but the advantage of working in this industry is that you have so many, um, so many keys, you, you can do a lot of things. Uh, I'm good with Excel now because I, I'm doing a lot of invoices. Uh, I know a lot about uh, food and wine because I'm organizing a gala dinner for, for, for the biggest companies with big chef. Uh, I know about uh, the fashion because I, I'm working with Chanel, Hermès and, uh, and the cosmetics industry. So you have to learn a lot of things. And um, I think that you can switch and you can do something else. Uh, after the, the, the COVID, a lot of people had to find a new job because we didn't have any job in the hospitality industry for two years. So a lot of them change. And um, so when you are event manager, you have so many skills. And when you are a salesperson, when you sell an hotel, an event, or when you sell cosmetics, or I have a friend now, she's working for, um, for a, a, sh a big shop uh, and she loves her job. So yeah. when you're a salesperson, you're a salesperson. You for can do it, uh, yeah, for any kind of industry. Exactly. Okay, that's great. Uh, extremely interesting. Thanks a lot uh, for sharing all these uh, interesting uh, things with us. We really appreciate it. With pleasure. And if uh, they do have a question later about my career or about Monaco and the internship, the jobs, they can just contact me on LinkedIn. Some of them went That's to school. They just let me know. And for the academy things, I'll let you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No, thank you for your availability. I mean, it's very kind from your side. So guys, feel free to contact uh, me uh, for any um, academic uh, IUM staff uh, and Anjuli for, I mean, her path or any suggestions you would have uh, concerning the hospitality and event management work in the luxury industry. So I thank uh, all the participants and really, Anjuli, thanks a lot for your, thank I mean, you. Amazing story. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Bye. Bye to everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.